Hey, how's it going? I'm good. How good. are you? I'm good. I'm Tammy Perkins Johnson. I'm a veterinarian. I'm Tracy Lampton. I'm a certified canine fitness trainer. And we are Coach for Paws. We are going to put together a first aid kit today. And you might be asking, well, what does that have to do with canine fitness? Well, I think it's just something good for every single pet parent to have is a first aid or an emergency kit. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually have one, but it's been um, years since I, you know, really looked at it. And when I looked at it the other day, there were things that were missing. And I, I was really organized like two years ago. And that's like <laughs> out, out the window. So I'm really excited about this because it's something that, um, you know, I, I for one need to have ready in case anything happens and who prepares for an emergency um, until it's an emergency. So um, I'm, I'm really excited about this. Good. Well, I hope we provide some good information. And we're actually just using a repurposed toolbox. So you don't have to go out and get anything super fancy. This is just an old toolbox that I cleaned up and uh, put a cute little sticker on. <laughs> All right, so we're going to get started. So the first thing that I have is a checklist because I love checklists. Yes. And um, the first three things on this checklist are your uh, veterinarian's, your regular veterinarian's phone number, an emergency veterinarian uh, phone number, and then also the ASPCA poison control. And we've actually provided that number for you, and then we have blanks at the top for you to fill in your, your um, veterinarian's Phone numbers just in case you um, can't get to your phone or your phone's dead um, you have to use somebody else's phone whatever it may be we just want you to have a quick fast way to get um, the phone numbers that you need great idea and so the ASPCA poison control that is if your pet eats something that they should I never I have no idea what that's all about <laughs> yeah like a whole bottle of the owner's medications yeah. no might have never done that she no was really bad about it. She I've never bad. had to call poison control <laughs> So um, that's the first thing that goes in your checklist. And should you want one for your own, you can download it, and we'll put the link in the comments below. Yeah. So first thing in your kit. First thing in my kit is my checklist. Is your checklist. All right. So the second thing we're going to put in your kit is um, uh, all of your pet's pertinent medical history, as well as the vaccination um, certificates. And a great thing to do is just put it in a Ziploc or a dry bag. Um, here in Florida, we have, you know, like hurricanes and flooding. So we just want to make sure that this is protected because maybe you get to the veterinary practice, they don't have electricity, they can't look up your information in the computer, but you have the most important things safe. Yeah, or you. something could spill in the box. Yeah. So now it's all it's all dry and protected. Well, that's a good point. I didn't think of that. <laughs> I sometimes have them. Village. Um, the second thing is a cute little picture of your dog. You don't have to do an OCD version like her <laughs> and laminate it. But you want it to be um, in a Ziploc or something protective. So um, if your pet gets lost or you just want to look at their picture. <laughs> <laughs> and that could be the case because yeah. she's so cute. She is very cute. But you want to have a picture of each of your pets in your emergency kit. It's just a nice thing to have in case you need to use it um, if they get lost. Cool. It's the best. And I would also make sure that if your pet is microchipped, um, that you have that the microchip numbers in your little um, medical records as well. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Next thing. Do, do, do. This is a slip leash. Um, I don't recommend these for everyday use, but this is in case um, your dog gets away and you need to just kind of lasso it. You have an angry cat you need to lasso, or you have a stray dog and you don't know really anything about that dog. You can just make a nice little loop and then slip it down because maybe there are situations that you don't want to have to get so close to actually put a real collar yeah. On them. Yeah. So, slip leash. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. The next thing that um, I like for everybody to have is a muzzle. The appropriate size for your pet. And I know there's some bad connotations with muzzles, but this is really for your protection in the case of emergency. If your pet is in severe pain, and I know your pet would never bite you, but I've also never heard that before. <laughs> um this is for your safety, and it's going to help yeah. you get your pet to the vet faster because you're not worried about your pet biting you because you're moving them when they are in pain. So I do recommend a muzzle in the case of emergency. Safe for you, safe for your pet. Absolutely. Yeah. Muzzle. Muzzle. Going in. Going in. All right. This is my favorite thing <laughs> in the pet emergency kit. Which gets back to dogs swallowing things that they shouldn't be swallowing. Yeah. 
hydrogen peroxide. This may be um, used to help your dogs um, give back the things that it, <laughs> that it took. <laughs> that it took. So the gift that keeps on giving. Right. Who's going to help your dog vomit? And this is something that I don't recommend that you use without contacting poison control or your veterinarian because there are things that you might not want them to throw back up. And so I think it's best to err on the side of precaution, talk to your vet, poison control, before you use the hydrogen peroxide. Um, one key tip that Tracy and I were talking about is that it might not work as well or at all if it's been opened. And I didn't know that. Um, because I used to, um, my, when she was a puppy, Maggie, she would swallow things that she wasn't supposed to. So um, she even swallowed something like right in front of me. So I picked her up, took her to the vet, and like they, you know, five minutes they came out and they're like, okay, she threw it up. And then it was like $200. So then someone told me, well, they probably just gave her hydrogen peroxide. And that's like, what, $1.99 at CBS? So that's when I started hearing about hydrogen peroxide, but I didn't know that it had to be unopened. Best, unopened. In the case of emergency, use what you got. But if you're going to put it in your um, handy-dandy first aid kit, um, I think I even wrote on the checklist that it should be an unopened bottle, just yeah. to help you remember. Yeah, that's interesting. Very good information I did not do. Next, we're going to kind of go through just a little bit of a bandage sort of a little scenario so if you want to bring up Rufus do we have Rufus we do <gasps> Rufus so say Rufus was walking down the road and he stepped on a piece of glass oh <gasps> yeah so it's bleeding pretty bad you know you're gonna have to take him to the vet but you need to sort of stop the bleeding just a little bit mm -hmm. so we're gonna have all the things that you need Hopefully all the things that you need. You can use gloves. So we are going to have you put uh, gloves in your first aid kit. We're also going to use them for something else. So I'm going to hang on to those. Um, antibiotic ointment. This is something, if it's really a small, minor, you know, really scratch, flesh wound, <laughs> a little bit, um, then you can use antibiotic ointment. You don't want to use this for the bigger wounds that you're going to take to the vet because they're going to do some other things. Yeah. Um, some non, non stick. Tofu pads. Your pet will appreciate this. Yes. I can imagine. Yeah. Um, roll gauze. We've got multiple uses for roll gauze. I love roll gauze. Cool. Um, saline solution. Um, I this just is, used that the other day, actually. Yeah, wound solution. So this is to help clean out the wound if you're going to put a um, little bandage on it or a bigger bandage on it. But um, this, everything that we're talking about today is use your own good common sense and don't do this if it's going to get you hurt. Yeah. 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 So this clean out wound, this is a vet wrap or conform. Um, I call it vet wrap. Human doctors call it conform probably. And the last is athletic tape. And okay. No, that's not last. That, I might have lied to you. We're going to also <laughs> have just like a regular little hand towel. And then scissors. Uh, yes. So poor little Rufus, he cut his leg on some grass. And so I'm just going to go through a really quick, easy um, bandage scenario. I'm not going to open this up because um, I'm going to keep it sterile. But we would wash out the wound if it's safe. We would put your non-stick telpa pad there. Mm -hmm. okay. And then we might hold that on with a little bit of rolled gauze. Okay, and then that's not really going to apply enough pressure to keep it from bleeding a lot. So you might use your um, towel, so you can do your towel and wrap it around. And then you could either hold that on with athletic tape, right? All right. You could do that one, just do that one, please. So do that, mm -hmm. okay? Or you could use your conform or a vet wrap. This sort of sticks to itself, so it's super handy too. So that's just a nice way to hold some pressure on that wound until you get to the, the vet's office. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I want to say about this vet wrap is you never want to use it without something nice and cushiony underneath it. Why is that? If it, um, if it slips down, which it does all the time if it's on a leg, mm -hmm. um, if it slips down, it can constrict um, the blood flow to the leg because it gets really tight. Um, mm -hmm. So you want to make sure that if you use the vet wrap, it's a great product, but you just want to have something nice and cushy um, underneath. That's a good tip. Yeah. Yeah. And then um, also we want some scissors, and we prefer to have blunt end scissors. I don't know if you can see that. But because if you need to cut something off of your pet, 
um, you want to make sure that you're not going to accidentally cut them because that happens. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah, that's a nice, that's a nice touch. But in scissors. All yeah. right. So he survived his trip to the veterinary office. He was a good little doggy. He's a good doggy. He's a good doggy. So um, once again, roll gauze. That's on your checklist. Okay. Non-stick telfa pad. Um, towel. I'm gonna save that for later. Sorry, just okay. kidding. <laughs> Athletic tape. Blunt in scissors. I think this is really. I haven't had these. This is a good tip. Um, conform or vet wrap. Mm -hmm. And then your um, wound wash. It can be antibacterial, something like chlorhexidine. Yeah. Um, just something that if your pet is um, and it's safe, you can wash out the wound before you wrap it. I use this for. Uh, uh, my dog had um, a neutering surgery, and the cone put, it, I guess it rubbed and, and made a hot spot. Oh, yeah. And so I used this to clean all the it, the goofy stuff out. So I after I came back from the veterinarian. Very metaphorical. <laughs> goofy stuff. I'm not a veterinarian. There you go. Um, there's your antibody cream. Great. All right. So maybe Rufus is not feeling well, and he you suspect he might have a fever. Uh-oh. In... There's not a good way by touching their nose to tell if they have a fever or not. So yeah. there's a really good way to tell if they have a fever, and that's to take their temperature. And you take it rectally. And so a couple little things you want to have for that. Poor Rufus. Um, we're going to use these gloves. <laughs> and then we have the cutest little Vaseline oh jar on the face of the planet. But this we're just going to put on the end of the thermometer. And the thermometer, you can use a uh, digital one. I recommend the eight seconds. You mm -hmm. want a short amount of time as possible. If you use the mercury thermometer, it's going to take longer. We don't want that. Rufus, Rufus doesn't, doesn't like want that. that. Yeah. So, you know, rectally. Yeah. All right. There's your digital thermometer. Okie doke. There's your gloves. Thank you. And your Vaseline. And the cutest little bottle of Vaseline I've ever seen. Eva. Um, great little thing to have is tweezers in case your pet steps on um, thorn or you have to remove ticks because I can't stand to touch ticks. No. 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 I don't think it's good for you to touch a tick. Um, toenail clippers because sometimes they will snag a nail and it'll be part of the way on, part of the way off. It's a little bloody kind of an ordeal. Um, if it's, um, if it's bad, I do recommend you take them to the veterinarian because sometimes they do need to have some sort of a little sedation so, mm -hmm. so they can get that off. But um, if it's not too bad, toenail yeah. clippers. Yeah, always good to have handy. And that you know where it's, so you're not like trying to find. Search. Yeah, because if I have to find anything in this house, it's going to take forever. Forget right. about it. <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot to tell Rufus you, too. This, this, this is, um, these are alcohol pads. This is to wipe off the thermometer after you use it. You know, so yep. it's clean for next yeah, time. Good <laughs> for sure. All right, another thing, you know, we use the gauze to help hold on the telfa pad. I'm going to show you another trick for gauze. One of them, super easy, is say you don't have a muzzle, but your pet is trying to bite you when you're moving them because they were injured. Mm -hmm. A simple thing you can do is just make a little um, loop, and then you can put it over your pet's oh, mouth like idea. this, and then you can snug it up, and then you can take it around the head behind the ears and tie it. Okay. So that's just another way to make a makeshift muzzle in um, a situation. Okay. And then another one, you're going to help me with this one, is say that your dog likes to chew on sticks. Mm. Yeah. Or palm fronds. Or palm fronds. I yeah. have one that likes to get palm fronds stuck in his mouth. And you um, need to see if there's something stuck in your pet's mouth. So you'll use, you can use this gauze. It's going to make it more safe. You probably need two people. And you can use this pin light. So you can use the pin light to look in the mouth, um, much smaller than a regular flashlight. I mean, use what you have if you don't have a pin light, but I recommend a pin light going in your um, first aid kit. Okay. And then I'm going to let you help me with this. Okay. This is this is the dog's mouth, his canines, and he's trying to um, not dangerous. let me not let me look in the <laughs> in the mouth. Like I can't get his jaws open. So show me what you're, you might do with those uh, those. Uh, so I'm going to do it like. This. Yep, so that can pull down the bottom jaw, yep. Uh -huh. And then you want to have another one. And this was when two people come in it handy, right? I think right? it has to be two people yeah. to do this. And so then you can just kind of 
you know, gently pull the dog's mouth open safely so your fingers aren't in the way yeah. and see if there's something stuck in the roof of his mouth. A lot of times they'll get sticks stuck between um, the teeth sideways. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so yeah, you're for super good use for he's roll eyes. Yeah, he's super talented in being able to do that. So that's a good tip. Okay. Um, then another thing, too, is just a tongue depressor. You can look in the mouth to, make, to see if there's anything in there. Cats especially like to get um, strings wrapped around their tongue. Or you can use it as a splint. Maybe you think your dog's um, leg um, might be broken, so you can incorporate that into your bandage. Just till you get to the vet, this is not a fix. This is a stabilizer till you get to the, the veterinary practice. So, Good point. Um, tongue depression. So maybe Rufus, he's accident prone this one. <laughs> he's had a really tough couple of weeks. Yeah. So maybe he has a swelling on the leg and your vet says, well, you can come to uh, the appointment tomorrow, but maybe you can ice pack it. And so what you want to do is use that handy dandy towel and you just want to put that between the ice pack and your pet skin. So you don't want to potentially have a um, cryo injury or a cold injury um, with a frostbite right. um, from an ice pack being directly on the skin, especially to those um, dogs that don't have any hair like uh, Chinese crested, yeah, Italian greyhounds. Italian greyhounds, yeah, that's good, and it's also just kind of a, a nice way for they don't get too uncomfortable. Yeah, so because if it goes right on the on the paw, after a while it's going to get kind of uncomfortable. Yeah, so usually ten minutes, ten minutes on, ten minutes off, kind of our rule. Um, these um, these are peas, and they're a nice thing to have because you can either uh, heat them or uh, freeze them, so it can be a hot or cold pack. So I really like these peas, yes. and then your towel. Okay, all right. Into the kit. Into the kit again. Um, we're going to say maybe Rufus is flopping his head around. We think he might have something in his ears. You can use um, ear wash and um, cotton balls. And so you can either just put the ear wash in there um, and then use the cotton balls to get the ear wash out. Or you can be nice and put it onto the cotton balls and swab it around. But you don't ever want to use a Q-tip. No. No. So, ear wash any kind, canine, or pet ear wash. So, this is specific for dogs. Pets. Yeah, and pets. Yeah. Awesome. And you don't want to use a Q-tip because of... It can damage... The eardrum, right? Yeah, you... you yeah. Okay. All right. Good. Good to know. All right. Eye wash. So, this is uh, something that I see a lot of dogs will get, like, a seed stuck in their eye or... Um, a piece of a um, little piece of wood like a splinter not mm -hmm. in the eye but mm -hmm. just you know hanging out where it shouldn't be and this is just eye wash that um, saline it'll say eye wash pet eye wash and this you can just flush out um, the eye good that I've had in my kit but thank goodness I haven't had to use um, this is a K row syrup or what was that other one? corn syrup mm -hmm. and this is something good to have if you have uh, puppies or small dogs um, sometimes their blood glucose will get low, and so you can just swab that on their gums, and it will get their blood sugar up until you get to the vet. That's good to know. This yep. is one I did not know either. And it's also good for pecan pie. <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I, don't I think you need more than that. I would never know. Um, eyedropper. This is uh, to give cats uh, medicine. A lot of times um, their medication is liquid, so that is a good thing to uh, just have extra eyedropper. Or... Okay. You can use a syringe. I would suggest you have multiple uh, syringes and sort of based on the size of your pet. Um, but syringes can be used for a couple different things. One is we can put uh, saline in there and um, get a little more force behind uh, cleaning the wound. Say here in Florida we have a lot of sand and so we want to get the sand out of the wound. And you can just put the saline in there and, and um, put a little more force behind there and get the sand out of there. Another thing that you can use this for is to... Um, put their medication if they have liquid medication or sometimes your veterinarian will tell you that they want the pill dissolved and so you can put the pill in here with some um, water and let it sit for a little bit and then squirt it into the mouth so that's a, a no, good way a good if you can't uh, get your pet to take the medication or uh, it won't eat it hidden in the food sometimes you, at certain medications you can dissolve in water the last thing that you can use this for which I think is fantastic is you can use the um, toenail trimmers to cut off the end of the syringe and actually use it like a pill popper. So you could put the pill in there that they don't want to take uh -huh. and they won't eat in the food and then you can just beep, just pop it right in the mouth. Wow. Instant pill popper. That's cool. Right? That's very cool. I like that. I might have to use that. We don't have much more. So 
Um, this is medication. This is Benadryl. I recommend that everybody keep this in their uh, emergency kit as long as it's okay with their regular veterinarian. This can be used in the case of a reaction. Sometimes they get vaccine reactions. Other times they can get stung by a bee. Um, they can get something you don't know what and get hives. But uh, common with reactions is either their eyelids start to swell or sometimes their muzzle will start to swell. And if that starts to uh, obstruct the airway, that can be a big deal. So um, Benadryl is a, a thing that I definitely recommend. I yeah. will say it can make them sleepy <laughs> or it can make them crazy. Just yeah, so you know. I have to keep this um, in my kit because Dutch, uh, one of my dogs had an anaphylactic reaction to something. And I, I, I still don't know what he had uh, a reaction to. But his legs actually started to swell. Yeah. And then his, you know, he was shaking his head like something was, you know, itching. Um, so I, I didn't know what was happening. I just luckily ran into the emergency vet, but I keep Benadryl for a while. I kept, you know, something that's equivalent to an EpiPen for a dog. But then, um, since he's never had a reaction since, I just keep Benadryl on hand and that my veterinarian said, just give him the Benadryl and, and it will help you get to the vet at least give you, buy you some time. Absolutely. And on this, um, checklist, we've left some spaces at the bottom where you can write in the appropriate amount of uh, medications per your veterinarian. Um, so I think that's something that you want to have um, a yeah. dose for each of your pets. Um, because when it's a stressful situation, you don't want to have to think or remember. You just want to go to where you've written it down. And you go, I know Rufus here. He can have a, a whole Benadryl. Um, but that's not going to be the case for every pet. Yeah. Good. Good. Another thing to have is Dramamine. Um, so here, <clears throat> here we have to evacuate sometimes from hurricanes. Yeah, and you have pets that get really nauseous. They'll start drooling all over the place. Sometimes they'll vomit. And um, there are better medications for car sickness, but in a hurry, um, Dramamine is something that is super easy to get over the counter. I would recommend the same thing as you want to write in the proper dose given to you by your veterinarian. Yeah, definitely. Dramamine. All right. Almost done. <clears throat> Other thing I recommend is a non uh, anti-inflammatory. So say Rufus here has a really painful leg or even maybe a fever. And your um, veterinarian, you want to check with them first to make sure it's okay for your pet to have them. But if it's fine with your vet, I recommend having a non anti-inflammatory, um, the appropriate dose for each of your pets in your first aid emergency kit. Good. non anti-inflammatory. Two more things and we're done. Oh my. This is a lot of good stuff. In here. <laughs> so I'm going to be very prepared. Collapsible uh, water bowl um, and food bowl. Mine don't care what, what they eat off of. So at least a collapsible water bowl. Um, and it, it made me think that you might even want to just throw in a bottle of water. Yeah, that's a good point. Um, if you're Especially in a hurry. If you're taking this and, and running out the door. Yeah. If you're in a hurry, you need to have a good way to get, get, to get water to them. Yeah. Yep. I love these things. I have like a hundred of them. They're so cute. I know. So handy. All right, I believe this is the last thing. This is a blanket. <laughs> so this can be used on a larger dog. If you, you know, we were talking about the wound earlier, so you can use this to um, wrap a larger dog's leg if you need to. You can also um, use it to keep your pet warm. Yeah. Or maybe you, maybe yeah. you're cold. Yeah. But, or uh, like a um, like a stretcher. Yeah. Like so, if your dog, you know, gets I don't want to say, but he gets hurt, and you have to like. So yeah. wrap them up and, and carry them in the car. Yeah. yeah. So this is another way that you can safely transport your pet if they are unhappy um, because of injury. You can just uh, use this as a little uh, stretcher to get them in the car. Yeah. So it's all about um, your pet and uh, your own safety. It's yeah. Important. So what I was thinking also, too, is that this is, might be something that you have in your home, but then it might be something that you want to bring with you if you travel, right? Absolutely. Or if you have an RV, to have maybe a separate kit in your RV when you're traveling with your dogs. Um, so maybe that you want to have multiple, right? Right, and it doesn't have to be this big. Yeah. You, yeah. Can, you can condense Yeah, there's a lot of room in here, but this yeah. is um, this is kind of nice to be able just to have in the garage handy if yeah. you need it. This was great. I hope you guys got um, a lot of good information out of this. I know that I learned, um, I learned a lot, and I had, you know, like I said, put together a um, a smaller, you know, little kit, and I didn't realize, you know, all the things that probably should have gone in there. Um, so I think the checklist is is awesome. And like we said, the checklist is going to be in the comments. So please download the checklist and make sure that um, you have everything that you need for um, an unfortunate event uh, of an emergency. Yeah. Um, also, if you think of something that uh, should be on the list that we didn't include, we'd love, love to include it in our next 
checklist. Yeah, good. Yeah, good point. All right, thank you guys for tuning in and um, make canine fitness fun. And most importantly, hug, hug them, them every day. day. Thank you guys. Bye, y'all.